Hey everybody, Daniel from Space Dock here. As many of you may know, one of my very favourite works of science fiction is Ronald D. Moore's 2004 series Battlestar Galactica. While BSG's greatest strength is clearly its incredible writing and storytelling, the show also features some of my favourite spacecraft designs in science fiction, offering distinct and memorable styles for both Cylon and Colonial vessels. With that said, I have noticed a number of flaws in the design of certain Cylon vessels, which I'll be detailing in this short video. Across the four years of the colonial exodus from the Twelve Colonies, the Battlestar Galactica and her civilian fleet fell under attack by Cylon forces almost constantly, enduring numerous ambushes and pitched battles while drastically outnumbered. In spite of these relentless attacks, the colonial fleet was able to survive the entire journey to Earth, with a remarkable number of ships intact. While much of this can be attributed to the tactical abilities of Admiral William Adama and the competence of his crew, the Cylons' failure to destroy Galactica across countless engagements points to significant shortcomings in the tactics and composition of the Cylon fleet. The Cylon base stars of the Second Cylon War were designed not as frontline battleships, but as strategic weapons platforms, built specifically to carry out the long-planned holocaust of the Twelve Colonies using nuclear missile systems and the advanced computer virus concealed within Gaius Baltar's command navigation program. To this end, the vessels are built to carry vast numbers of raiders and guided missiles at the expense of any other offensive systems, leaving the ships with no conventional artillery guns or point defense systems. During the pursuit of the Galactica, the impressive flak systems of the Colonial Battlestar were able to protect the ship from even the largest missile barrages, leading to extremely few direct hull impacts across numerous battles. Had the Cylons carried even a single ballistic gun aboard their base stars during the pursuit, they would have been able to inflict a small amount of lasting damage in every engagement, even when defeated or forced to retreat. The result of this would be a scaling degree of cumulative damage to the Galactica across numerous engagements. And with no available shipyards or repair facilities to address this damage, the Galactica would surely be destroyed within at least the first year of its exodus, if not far sooner. Even after years of pursuing the Galactica without inflicting meaningful damage, the Cylons fail to realise the shortcomings of their missile-focused combat template. The same can be said for their lack of point defence weapons, a flaw which can be clearly seen in the Battle of the Hub, where Vipers carrying nuclear missiles are able to destroy the Resurrection Hub with almost no interference from Cylon defenders. Or in the first battle of the Cylon Civil War, where a lack of point defence on Cylon base stars leads to enormous casualties on both sides when the missile-laden base stars begin firing upon each other. In regard to their weapon systems during the Second Cylon War, the Cylons display a staggering inability to adapt to their situation, made even more surprising by the fact the Cylons made extensive use of conventional artillery weapons during their first conflict with the Colonials 40 years prior. It should speak volumes that the Galactica was finally defeated not by cumulative damage, but by metal fatigue. The Cylons failed so consistently to realise the shortcomings of their missile weapons that the Galactica literally rotted away before they could destroy it. This outcome seems unbecoming of a species that so often reminds us that they have a plan. Thank you for watching. Please remember to follow the link below to check out our announcement for our upcoming original sci-fi drama, The Sojourn.